fifth grade, we are ready for our Tuesday review of pages 414 through 417. And I'm going to go back to what you read yesterday, um, Mysterious Oceans. Um, really cool article about the Mariana Trench and the deepest known point um, off the coast of Japan. And, um, and it gives us the idea of how long it is, 1,554 miles long and uh, 44 miles wide. As far as um, the depth, that area goes down to over six feet, or six miles, sorry, six miles long. Um, that's that really deep section, uh, the Challenger Deep, descends nearly seven miles, okay? Um, you also got to see some of the cool creatures, and they talked about their environment a little bit more. But that's where we get to our comprehension strategy, ask and answer questions. So we can check our understanding of these complex scientific texts. Um, sometimes we ask ourselves questions that help us to know, okay, did I understand what I just read? So they give us an example. The last paragraph in the section, di deep diving on page 411 of Mysterious Oceans, has several questions about oceans. You may wonder how to find the answers. So let's look at that, 411, last paragraph. Okay, so 411, last paragraph. The deep ocean is also mysterious, a mysterious environment that remains largely unexplored. Little is known about it or its creatures. Do any of them cache their cache food the way land animals do? Do any ocean species hibernate? As one example among countless mysteries, not a single living giant squid has ever been spotted until a few years ago. We knew there exist, they existed only because of their corpses that had been found. All right, so um, there's some questions in there, right? Do they cache food away? Not catch. Okay, that's not the same thing. To store away food. Cache stores the food. That's what it means. Um, do they hibernate? So we want to know um, the answers to those questions. And it says, um, you know, we might we might wonder what those answers are. So we reread a little bit more on there. Uh, there's little reasons known why. And we're going to ask ourselves, why is the deep ocean so mysterious when we first read it? Um, those questions kind of help us to answer that. So when we look at this question here, the deep ocean is also, or not question, but statement, the deep ocean is also a mysterious environment that remains largely unexplored. Why is it so mysterious? And we can kind of uh, get that answer as we read because it's so deep and because there is, there's been little creatures spotted down there we don't know any much about it and that's why it's a mysterious environment uh, another example of this okay um if we look let's go to oh let's see i want to make sure i don't do the one that you guys are going to do 4 11 4 12 let's do 413 here okay um, what has truly surprised scientists, however, is the discovery of another very different type of environment on the deep ocean floor. So I read that and I might ask myself, what is the environment that, what is the different type of environment that they have discovered? And then as I read on, they found that cracks or vents in the Earth's surface exist underwater just as they do on dry land. Seawater rushes into these vents where it mingles with chemicals. The water is also heated by magma or hot melted rock. When the water from the vent bursts back into the ocean, it creates geysers and hot springs. Okay, so there is a warm water environment with cracks that have that has a magma or a hot melted rock that uh, warms up that, that water right there. So that is a different type of environment. So now I can answer the question I just asked, 
by reading onto there. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So when you read part of it, you stop and you say, hey, you know, I wonder what this is. Even though you've already read it once, I want you to think in that way for it, okay? So use the information in the first two paragraphs of deep diving on page 411 to begin to answer the question, why is the deep ocean so mysterious? Okay, so read those first two paragraphs on 411 and write down your answer to that. Um, you have your your turns and it tells you different things that you need to do on there. So use that worksheet to answer those questions. All right, cause and effect. We know cause and effect. We've talked about it before. The cause is why something happens. The effect is what happens uh, afterwards. So, and, and we hear the phrase, because of this, or as a result, if this, then this. Uh, here's an example right here. Because the cause, because of the invention of submer submersible, then there's the exploration of the ocean floor, right? Because it's so dark, then we find that there's not as many creatures down there or something to that effect would be a cause effect. Um, your cause, just remember the word because this happened, then the effect happens. You're going to reread the rest of the, uh, page 412, identify the cause and effect relationships that explained in these paragraphs. So give me a couple cause and effects from page 412 is basically what we want. Okay? Expository text. Um, again, this is topic with main ideas and key details. Here's an idea, here's the key details. Here's the idea, here's the key details. Uh, there's a lot of cause and effect relationships. Okay, so we have a cause and effect. And includes text features such as photos and maps. So a map we know is a flat picture of something of an area. It has a title, it has a scale, it might have a compass rose on there to show the directions. Um, and it gives us more information. So when you study that map on 411, what is the approximate length and width of the Mariana Trench? So you can figure out what is the length and width of the Mariana Trench, and how does the map help you visualize it? How does it help you understand more about the Mariana Trench? And your answer can't be, it doesn't, all right, because it does, you just have to get yourself to the point of realizing how does it help you. Okay? So what's the approximate length and width? And you can tell that by looking at one of the parts that unlocks the map. Okay? And then um, how does it help you visualize that? Context clues is the next part. Uh, vocabulary strategy here. We look at what's around it to find the definition or the meaning of the word. So if they're talking about a cylinder, it has no mouth, eyes, or stomach. Its soft body is encased in a white cylinder and topped with a red plume. It can grow to be eight feet tall. It is a sea creature known as a giant tube worm, and it lives without any sunlight on the deep ocean floor. Because it's being called a tube worm, a tube and a cylinder are the same things. So I can understand that a tube worm might look like a giant cylinder or a giant um, container that would look like that. And that could help me understand more about the word cylinder and tube worm. Um, if I don't know what cylinder means, tube. Okay, a tube. I know what a tube is. So that would help me understand what a cylinder is. And in the same sense, um, a tube worm, I would think, would look like a tube, okay? Those two can help each other out to define each other. So what you're going to do is you have two words there that I wrote down onto your, um, your turn worksheet. You're going to find them um, in page 412 there, and I want you to try and figure out the meaning of those words that I wrote down. Okay, 
So you're doing the your, your turns for 414 through 417 on your paper there. And hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit of background as to what you're looking at.